Hello everyone and welcome to another session of Physio TV. I am Dr. Rucha Rayas, uh, Assistant Professor here at Cardiovascular and Respiratory Physiotherapy Department at Sancheti Institute for Orthopedics and Rehabilitation, College of Physiotherapy, Pune. Uh, today we will be speaking about um, the topic which uh, happens to be one of my very favorite, uh, ECG in exercise testing. So. Today, we are going to be focusing specifically on um, the uh, ECG changes which occur during an exercise test. And I will also be covering uh, specific details of this, which are useful for physiotherapists while prescribing uh, exercises or while uh, formulating a, a rehab protocol. So uh, what we will be covering in this session is a brief introduction to what exactly ECG and exercise testing is. Why is this testing done? Why is it important? Uh, how is an ECG recorded during exercise testing? What are the normal changes which should occur? Uh, what are the abnormal changes which you really need to look out for? Um, and what does that mean? And lastly, I have two ECG uh, in exercise testing reports with me, which we will be interpreting and uh, you'll get an idea of how exactly to utilize information from an actual report and uh, use that for your uh, rehab protocol plan. So uh, when I use the term exercise ECG testing, we are speaking about two things here. One is the ECG or the electrocardiogram, uh, which is recorded, that is basically recording of electrical activity of the heart. And we will be doing this not just at rest, but actually during and after uh, a graded exercise test, okay? This graded exercise test usually is a maximal treadmill test uh, commonly done. Apart from that, there are other options such as uh, cycle ergometry tests as well. But the treadmill tests are uh, commonly performed. What this does is there is a gradual increase in load on the cardiovascular system. So we have stages of um, exercise test protocols. You must have heard about Bruce protocol, modified Bruce protocol, Norton's protocol. So when we use the term protocol, that means there is a particular process to it uh, in which there are stages, one, two, three, four, and so on. And in each stage, either the speed of walking changes or increases or the incline at which you are walking increases the basic purpose of doing this is to further load the cardiovascular system and thereby check whether your heart is able to handle that extra load or not. Okay. During this process, how do we know what is exactly happening in the heart? So for that, we do an ECG recording okay, or recording of electrical activity of the heart. And based on what changes occur in the ECG during the exercise testing helps us identify what exactly is wrong and how far can the patient push himself without uh, causing, you know, uh, undue or um, the, what do you say? Uh, uh, basically without causing any uh, adverse uh, responses. Okay. Then uh, ECG findings are indicative of probable presence of disease. Okay. That is specifically coronary artery disease. Uh, or sometimes also uh, helpful to identify rhythm abnormalities. And uh, that is basically the purpose of it. Why exactly is it done is it could either be done for diagnostic purposes. Uh, so you can it can help to arrive at a medical diagnosis. Secondly is for prognostic purposes. So you do a treadmill test today. Uh, your patient maybe participates in uh, a cardiac rehab program for, let's say, six weeks, eight weeks, uh, maybe three months, six months. And over a period of time um, later on, you want to know what kind of a change has occurred. Okay, So pre and post testing will help you identify what changes or what conditioning has occurred in the patient's uh, system. Next is only, the test is only done if pre-test probability of the disease is high. That is, the patient has multiple coronary artery disease risk factors. And there is insufficient evidence for recommending exercise testing as a routine screening in asymptomatic individuals. So basically, this means is the test should not be done until and unless really indicated. Okay. So um, we all know that coronary artery disease is a lifestyle condition, right? So considering that... 
the kind of lifestyle that we have been following over the uh, past several decades gives rise to some amount of some or the other amount of coronary artery disease in you and me and everyone else so if i am asymptomatic and i still undergo a treadmill test with ecg testing uh, there are good chances that there may be certain positive changes that occur okay now um, when exactly to do this test it depends on whether you really need it to identify uh, either um, your risk of uh, having coronary artery disease based on maybe having a lot of uh, modifiable or non modifiable risk factors uh, or if you have found certain changes or onset of symptoms and you wish to confirm as to what exactly is changing in the heart when you are performing physical activity next we come to how exactly is ecg recording done during exercise testing so um this is basically a standard 12 lead ecg recording that is done um you have three bipolar leads that is 1 2 and 3 there are three unipolar leads that is augmented leads avl avr and avf and you have precordial leads which are attached on the surface or anterior surface of the chest v1 to v6 so as shown in the image here this is called the mason likers um lead placement okay so you have uh, leads placed at uh, these particular positions and v1 to v6 over the anterolateral aspect of the precordium okay so this is how the ecg leads will be placed on your chest if you are to undergo an exercise uh, ecg testing then let's see uh, right so this is exactly how uh, the ecg uh, leads will be placed on the surface of the chest and here in the image below we can see how the individual who is undergoing the test is walking on the treadmill while his ecg is being continuously monitored by the technician and um, doctor okay so what what is important here for us to note is there is a continuous recording seen on screen okay so if you are present with the patient during the exercise test uh, being conducted that's a good thing because you have real time monitoring happening right so you get to find out on that specific uh, point of time what exact abnormal changes are occurring right but for documentation purpose when we get a report the report needs to be in printed form correct now these tests can go on for a really long duration of time depending on the patient's capacity so we cannot have a continuous printing of ecg throughout the test so when exactly prints are taken okay that depends now usually uh, a print of an ecg will be taken at rest when the patient is in supine followed by when the patient is in standing so you get to know about positional variations then another ecg is taken with the patient do performing hyperventilation we'll come to that when i show you the report also then uh, another recording is taken during the exercise test now when exactly do we record the ecg during an exercise test as i mentioned before you have stage wise protocols correct so if you take bruce protocol for example uh, every stage lasts for 3 minutes okay in a standard bruce protocol so at the end of each stage for approximately 15 seconds ecg recording will be done okay apart from that if during any moment of the stage whenever abnormal findings are identified at that point of time also a print can be taken okay but whenever prints of ecg are taken normally at the top uh, they uh, it is mentioned as to when the recording has been done okay so when we go to the example of a report uh, you will understand this better and last is after the exercise test is completed so at the peak of the exercise test meaning when the patient has reached his maximal capacity at that point of time there will be an ecg and when the test is terminated that means when recovery starts occurring during the recovery phase also at each minute or at uh, every 2 minute interval um exercise ecg recording will be printed okay so when you get the report with you you have to note down when exactly the ecg recording has been done 
okay is it at rest is it during the exercise test which stage is it at or whether that recording has been done after the test is completed now uh before we go on to the actual normal and abnormal changes i would like to focus a little bit on revising the parts of an ecg if you are already well versed with this you can skip a little bit uh, into the future of this video so when i speak about waves we mean p q r s and t correct that is the positive and negative deflections when we say segments that means the isoelectric lines in between waves okay so you have the pr segment here this is important please make sure you note this this is pr segment and this one is st segment both of these segments have a lot of relevance in exercise ecg test interpretation okay apart from that you have intervals intervals are basically combinations of waves and segments so there is pr interval here qt interval here and um, that's about it okay now apart from this one thing that you really need to note down is what exactly is this point so this point here where the qrs complex is ending and the st segment just begins this is called the j point okay so once again j point is something that you need to know how to identify because it has a very important place in interpretation of ecg in exercise testing so let's start first with normal ecg changes with exercise um this information has been taken from uh, american college of sports medicine book uh, 10th edition okay first we will speak about each of the waves and then uh, a few of the intervals as to what change occurs this is a normal response which will be seen in an apparently normal individual when they undergo exercise ecg testing okay so first one is p wave okay p wave basically tells you about atrial contraction correct now when you are performing exercise load on the system is increasing which means your heart is having to beat at a faster rate okay and at an increased force of contraction correct now what happens here is if you look at the first ecg on the left you will see you you will be able to identify each wave separately okay there is p wave there is the qrs complex and there is t wave okay followed by another p wave qrs complex and t wave okay but when the rate further increases okay so we are pushing the patient even more cardiac load is increasing to a point where rate is so fast that you won't be able to identify p waves and t waves separately okay so if you note in the first ecg there is p wave and t wave which can be separated from each other so this is t wave of the first beat and t wave of the upcoming beat correct or the next beat these can be seen as two separate wave forms however if you look in the ecg on the right they both have merged to form one single positive deflection okay this is a normal response and it occurs when heart rate is high especially higher than 150 beats per minute okay now so this these are the changes that may be or are usually seen in p wave apart from that uh, q wave sometimes there may be an increase in amplitude of septal q waves so when we use the term septal that means lead number v1 and v2 next is r wave r wave may show no change there may be increase in amplitude of r wave or there may be decrease in amplitude of r wave it depends on how your uh, system is responding to exercise qrs complex usually decreases in duration what this means is qrs complex is talking about ventricular depolarization or ventricular activity ventricular contraction rather so when the heart is pumping really 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 fast there is not enough time for each beat to occur that is why the duration is now becoming smaller and smaller okay then uh, j point we'll be talking about j point a little bit more in detail so j point that we had identified before end of qrs complex and beginning of st segment 
there may be a little bit of depression of the J point at very peak of exercise. This may be a normal finding in some individuals. We'll come to how to identify whether it is abnormal or not. In T wave, there, there could be an increase in T wave amplitude. In QT interval, we know there is a formula. There is rate associated change in QT interval. So as your heart rate increases, QT interval also changes. So these are all the normal changes uh, that are seen in an ECG when an individual is performing an exercise test. Now we come to abnormal ECG changes. Okay. Now when it comes to abnormal changes, this is how we have classified them. We will be talking about ST segment changes. Okay, ST segment, the segments that we had discussed. Under ST segment changes, there are three things that we'll be discussing. Either the ST segment is elevated, which means it is going above the baseline. ST segment depression, which means ST is going below the baseline. Or there is ST segment normalization from an abnormal resting position. Okay, we'll discuss this more in detail. And in arrhythmias, which basically means that there is some sort of cardiac rhythm abnormality, the arrhythmia could be supraventricular, which means the rhythm or the abnormal rhythm is coming from somewhere above the ventricular level, or the rhythm abnormality could be at the ventricular level. Now, uh, to begin with the abnormal ECG changes, we'll go through some basic uh, concepts here. How do I identify what is the ST segment change? Okay. So there are certain steps to follow here. Identify the J point. Check two small boxes or 80 milliseconds to the right of the J point and compare it with the baseline. So let's take an example. Let's say this is the ECG that you are interpreting. Okay. We can identify that there is a large negative deflection here. Okay, so this is the Q wave. Then we have a positive deflection. This is the R wave. Okay, and ideally it should have gone back down for a negative S wave. But what is happening here is the ECG continues to go up here. Okay, so normally the ST segment should have been at the baseline, correct? But here ST segment seems to have gone up. Correct. So this is ST segment elevation. But how much is the elevation? How do I count? So as mentioned, the J point is where the QRS complex ends. Correct. So this is approximately where the J point is. Okay. Now from here, we go two points to the right. So two boxes to the right. One and two. Here, the ST segment is at this point. Okay. So we will be checking how high is this point from the baseline, okay? So baseline starts here, correct? So one small box, two small boxes, three, four, five, and almost six, okay? So six small boxes high, that is six millimeters of ST segment elevation, okay? Anything more than or equal to one millimeter is considered significant, and usually the abnormality should be seen in two or more consecutive leads. That is leads which are neighboring to each other. Okay. So the first ECG example that we saw has six millimeters of ST elevation. Similarly, we'll check one more example. Here what is happening is you don't have an initial negative deflection. So there is no Q wave. There is a positive R wave. This is followed by a negative S. And the ST is not coming back to the baseline. It is staying low for a while. Okay. Here also, where the QRS complex ends is the J point. From the J point, we'll go two boxes to the right, one and two. So this is where the ECG is, two boxes to the right of the J point. So how many millimeters is this from the baseline? So baseline is here. This is where the ECG started from. So one, two, three, and four, four millimeters of ST depression because ST is below the baseline. Okay, this is how we will be counting how much of ST segment change has occurred. Now we come to an important question. Here, what we are doing is we are comparing where the ST lies in comparison to the baseline. Now, what do I mean by the baseline? Which baseline are we talking about? Okay. 
so let's see how depending on what baseline you choose you may get different answers and what exactly are we supposed to do so let's say this is the ecg of your patient and you wish to interpret how much st segment change has occurred okay now simply by looking at the ecg i understand that st segment has gone down below the baseline so there is some form of st depression happening but how much so as we have already seen first step is identification of j point so that's the j point yes after that we go two boxes to the right two small boxes to the right of it that is 80 milliseconds this point is where i'll be checking okay the one the blue dot okay now let's say i take this as the baseline okay can you see this is the uh, pr segment correct so this yellow line if i take this as the baseline st segment depression is of around 1 mm correct but what if i take this as the baseline this is where the ecg started from this is where p wave began from so is this the baseline so if i take the blue line as the baseline then that means there is 2 mm of st depression so which one am i supposed to pick but wait there is one more option should i take this as the baseline this is where the ecg is ending and the next one is starting correct the red line if i choose the red line as the baseline i might get 3 mm of st depression so there are three completely different answers that i'm getting depending on which baseline i choose so what is the answer here which baseline is the correct one so based on acc aha 2013 joint statement the end of pr interval is to be used as the baseline okay so here we had seen pr interval is ending here where the yellow line is correct this should be your baseline okay and from here if we check how much is the st change it is just 1 mm so the correct interpretation here is st depression of 1 mm only so i'm hoping that you guys have understood uh, at least some of the basics of how to go about um, ecg interpretation in response to exercise we have just covered some of the initial parts of abnormality uh, interpretation i will be covering the rest of the contents in another session uh, that's part 2 of uh, ecg in exercise testing so thank you for attending this session today and i hope you got to learn something new we will continue in the second part where we'll also be interpreting uh, an actual report so stay tuned and i will see you next time thank you so much